This video is all about biased sampling methods. A sampling method is said to be biased if it systematically favors any of the outcomes over any other. We're talking about the design here of the sampling method, not, let's say, the wording of the question or other elements that can create response bias. Here we're talking about, is this biased to begin with? Is the design of the sampling method going to favor one outcome over the other? The first type is a voluntary response sample. In these cases, people have the choice of responding to some type of general appeal. Let's talk about a couple of different forms of that. Here's one example. A phone poll where people call in to express their opinion or answer some certain question, or even a call poll where people are called and then they have the choice of responding to the call or not. This is biased because, again, people have a choice of whether they answer the question or not. In the case where people are actually calling in, they have the option to call in or not call in. Another example of voluntary response is an online poll. Here's a question that says, how do you feel about your favorite team's draft picks? In this case, again, people have the option of whether they respond to the poll or not. These two sampling methods are biased because they would favor one outcome over the other. Generally, in these cases, people with stronger opinions are going to tend to answer these questions based on whatever the issue is. You'd be surprised, even though these methods are biased, how many companies and organizations do use these to gauge public opinion. Let's talk about another bias sampling method, what's called a convenience sample. In a convenience sample, the person who's doing the sampling will go to a place where people gather, some type of public place, say like a mall or a cafeteria, anywhere where a lot of people would be, and they would ask people that they see randomly um, some type of question, ask them to fill in a survey, or they ask them some type of general question. So here's an example. Let's say Mr. K decides to go to the mall to ask a whole bunch of people, maybe all these people on the escalator right now, um, some type of general question. It's easy for uh, Mr. K to do this because the people are already coming to him. He is going to a place where a lot of people are anyway, and he's asking the people there a question. Again, this method is biased because we're not really getting a good picture of the population here. We're only getting a picture of the people who were at the mall that day. Again, this is a convenience sample, and it is biased. Let's talk about a few sources of response bias. The first source of response bias uh, could come about from the design of your question, if you're ever doing some type of a survey. If the question is worded in a way that's unclear or is misleading or um, could favor one outcome over the other, then people might be more inclined to respond one way over the other. Another source of response bias is that when you ask some type of survey or question, you're not guaranteed that people are going to respond to that survey or question. Even if you did a whole bunch of work to make sure the people you choose to respond to the question and represent your population, you're not guaranteed to get that type of response back. Even the United States Census, which is required to be filled out, still does not get a 100% response rate. Another source is what's called undercoverage. Some groups just naturally might be excluded um, while you're sampling. For example, if you were sampling United States households about a certain issue, well, anyone who doesn't own a home would not be sampled automatically just because of the type of sample that you decided to do. So the design of the question or the wording, non-response or people not turning in or responding to your question, and under coverage or excluding a certain group are all sources of response bias for sampling methods.